Okay, you're excitedly sitting at your terminal or in your idle editor and you are ready to write your first program. I'm going to show you the basic high-level programming workflow and you're actually going to write your first Hello World, is how it's called traditionally, program. Paul, I thought you were in Hong Kong. Welcome to the Coalition, JC. So, make sure you've got a shell open. Make sure you know how to launch Python 3. I'm going to type in Python 3 and that's going to give me a Python shell. You can see it opens up a Python 3.5.2 shell. This Python shell is a shell environment just like the one you're used to on your Linux, Mac, other Unix, uh, even Windows machine. But the interpreter that's running is not a shell interpreter like Bash or Z shell or another shell. The shell you're talking to is Python, acting like a shell. REPL, read, eval, print, loop. It is a read, eval, print, loop. It loops over those three things again and again and again. What's the read step? Well, when I type in something very simple like 8 times 8, that is a very simple calculation that we can all do in our heads. It is right now reading in whatever I write. And when I hit enter, it's going to grab the statement that I just typed in and evaluate that statement. That's the E. So we've read something in the line that I typed. We've evaluated it. That happens invisibly. And then printed it back out. You see the 64 got printed out on the next line. What that thing that I typed in evaluates to. Now that might seem like a strange distinction, but it's actually kind of important. So just start making it in your head now, and then you won't have lots of problems when you're trying to become an advanced programmer. So the L just gets added because we're going to loop back to read. Right now, Python, the interpreter, is reading what I'm typing in again. So it's like ready for my next bit of input. Maybe I'll type 8 times 8 again. Maybe I'll type 4 times 8. The excitement is probably killing you right now, and it's also killing the Python interpreter. Just kidding, it's a machine. It never sleeps. It waits forever. We could also do something like this. We could print hello world, the traditional first program that all new programmers write. So since you're a new programmer, go ahead and type exactly what I just printed. So the word print, an open parentheses, a double quote, the text hello world, end your quote, and then end or close your parentheses or paren. When you now hit enter, when Python reads this in and evaluates it, it's going to realize I need to print something out, and it does. So your workflow will be you try some stuff in the REPL or in the Python shell, you copy it, and then you paste it into your actual Python program. So if I paste print hello world in here, my text editor doesn't know that this is supposed to be a Python file. So I'm either going to tell it to use Python as a syntax, or I can just save it as a .py file. And that will tell my text editor when I open it, I'm using Sublime, that this is a Python file and you should do some Python syntax highlighting as appropriate. So we can just call this hi.py. We've tested our code here. We expect this to print out hello world. And now we've got it in our file. So how do we actually run this? So hit control D to exit your Python shell. Navigate to wherever your text file was saved to. In my case, I'm already in that directory, the Python course directory. You can see I can see my file here. It's hi.py. So now if I want to run that, remember how this got us our Python shell? Well, if you don't give Python any arguments, it assumes that you want an interactive Python shell or a REPL, a read, eval, print loop, like we just used to experiment with our code in real time. If you do give it an argument, so if you write something after you say Python 3, it's going to interpret that as a file that you want to execute. I can tell it hi.py, and then it's going to go execute this file. The only thing in this file is a print call, so this is a function, we'll talk about what functions are later, that prints out hello world. And you can see that's exactly what has happened here. The program then exits. For those of you who are into Linux, we can see that it exits with no errors, with zero. And 
that's the end. We're back at our shell here. Okay, so that's basically the life cycle of a Python program. It's also the basic workflow that you're going to be using when you're writing code. You're going to figure some stuff out in here, and that just dramatically increases the speed at which you can develop things. Because if you have to make tiny changes here over and over, and then save the file, and then run the file, and then make another change, and then save the file, and then run the file, programming is already so full of debugging and changing things and experimenting that having a faster way to do that can speed up the overall development of the piece of software you're trying to create dramatically, having this instant feedback of the Python shell, the REPL. I want to demonstrate one more thing because this REPL behaves a little bit differently than a Python program. The shell, you can think of it as almost like an x-ray machine for your code. If I just type in a string, hello world, and a string, we'll get to it later, but that's basically just something that's quoted, like a string of text. Hello world, that same string that we told print to print earlier. This, if I just type it here, because of how the REPL works, will evaluate to itself. You'll see that printed on the next line. If I actually grab this and throw it in here, when I run this file, you won't see this printed out. If you want to see something printed out, you actually have to tell Python to print it out. But because this shell is so helpful in trying to get you to see what your code is or what it's doing or what it evaluates to, because of how it works, it will evaluate everything right there and then print that back out to you. REPL, it reads in the string hello world. It evaluates it. Every string just evaluates to itself. You know, arithmetic evaluates to, you know, 8 times 8 is 64, but the string hello world evaluates to hello world itself. And this is what the Python shell does that a normal Python program doesn't do by default. It's printing everything out. In this program, I have to explicitly use the print function to print out the stuff that I'm actually interested in seeing as output. On the Python shell, printing is done automatically. You basically can't stop it from printing out whatever your thing, whatever you're testing, evaluates to. And that's just done as a way to help you actually see the data, the code, the stuff you're working with. I'm exiting again with Control D. I'm just going to prove to you that what I just said is true. And you can see in this case, I have the string hello world right here, but I only see it the second time when it's actually printed out. This is a silly example because I should have changed the text up. But here you go. <laughs> so you won't see silly world, right? Because I'm only telling Python to print here. So it's very different from the shell in that sense. Not everything is automatically printed in your program. Okay, that said, I wanna talk a little bit about syntax. I've mentioned that word before, and that just means the syntax of a language is the way that you need to use it. It's the exact characters that actually tell Python what you want to do. Python is a program. It is not a person. It is not able to kind of figure out what you meant by something. So if you have a tiny mistake, even the smallest mistake in what you're typing, Python is going to immediately throw up all over you and look at you with a very, very sad, sad look, like why are you doing this to me? I'm gonna create a syntax error right now. This is no longer correct because this string needs to have quotes around it. It's not a string unless it has quotes around it. We'll get into the specifics of strings later. I just want to show you an error. A lot of people get kind of freaked out because in every tutorial you see online or whatever, everything is just perfect and wonderful, and no one ever makes any mistakes, right? Through the magic of rehearsing something many times and then editing the video. But real life, <laughs> real life software development is messy. You will make lots and lots of mistakes. And you know what? It doesn't mean you're stupid. Everyone does. Every professional programmer makes a billion mistakes. The only reason they're better than you is because they've made more mistakes already and they've just gotten it out of the way. Now, the type of mistake I'm showing you is a very simple one. And as you can see, my text editor is literally already doing everything it can to tell me, hey, hey, whoa, 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 Dave, you're, you're screwing something up here. You'll have harder mistakes to figure out as you're programming, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So if I rerun this file now, I've saved my mistake here. I'm going to get a Python error. I want to walk you through how to evaluate or how to, how to look at one of these, figure out what's going on. It tells you the file that the error was on, 
This is useful because often you'll have programs that are larger and that have many, many files. So it tells you where the problem was, line two. Okay, yep, that's right. It will tell you where exactly it realized that there was a problem. This little caret here, this little arrow character, is pointing to the location where Python realized something is terribly wrong. And you can see Python was moving along here. Oh, it's a print function. Okay, we open a paren. Okay, this is gonna be a string. We've got a quote here. Oh, lovely, what a lovely string. Oh my God, I've hit the end of the line. I see an end of line character. What I What is happening? That is where Python goes. This is an end of line. While I was scanning this string, hello world. It just never ended and everything's terrible. This is a syntax error. It's an error with my syntax. So that's the last bit that I want to introduce to you, errors and dealing with stack traces from Python like this. Just to summarize, the important thing is to take away from this video. This is the Python shell where during a normal day of coding, you're going to be experimenting with things to try to get them right, to try to explore what the right approach is, to deal with whatever data you're working with. You can inspect and experiment with code in here. Once you have things the way you like them, you move them over to your source code file. Now, in practice, you'll often just be writing a bunch of code here, and then you'll like copy and paste it over here, kind of just sanity check yourself that way. So it's not totally unidirectional, like you'll only be pasting from here to there, and you'll only write something here if it's already checked out here. No. You'll go back and forth, you'll sanity check things that you've written, and then when you're kind of experimenting with something new, then you'll test it out here. So it goes both ways. Finally, syntax is important. Python does not know what you meant. It has to be exactly right for Python to understand it. And you will have errors large and small when you are writing programs. It's a completely normal part of writing code. Don't be scared of this. This is literally just trying to help you get your thing right. Um, Python has put a lot of work into making this as decluttered and useful as possible for programmers because this is what programmers spend a large chunk of the day staring at. Learn to let errors guide you. Please read these things. Don't just post, I got an error or something. Try to read through them and reason through them. We're going to learn a game in this course called I'm the Python interpreter what the hell am I doing uh, it's gonna be very useful to kind of mentally step through things to try to see where the Python interpreter might have gotten confused and where everything went wrong I hope that's been useful I'll see you guys in the next video the rate at which we actually write code is gonna pick up quite a bit I'll see you there